Guys, how's it going? It's Rob Sutton, and today we're gonna to talk about my top six things that I use for vlogging, creating videos inside the house that are all under $200. But before we get into that, in typical fashion around here, we're gonna enjoy a tasty beverage while we do it. So today we are looking at the M43. Another New England style IPA, keeping with the whole hazy citrus theme that seems to be all the rage right now. So this one actually comes out of Williamston, Michigan. It's been pretty hard to get from what I understand it. They actually use a combination of hops here, Calypso, Amarillo, and Citra during the boil process. In the dry hop process, it's Citra, Amarillo, and Simcoe. So let's take a look. So it's 65 IBUs and 6.8% alcohol by volume. It's very much that New England style hazy citra you know, craze that's going on right now. Tastes really good. I can see why it's silly high, so highly rated. So yeah, let's enjoy this one and start talking about some vlogging equipment. So I used to use one of those bigger road mics and carry them around with me all over the place and even use it in the house. But now I'm actually down to the micro version of, of the road microphone. One, it attaches to the screen a lot easier and I find that the lighter design makes it more compact and easier to use. I don't notice a huge voice difference when you start to get into U YouTube compression and you can actually use the EQ and Premiere and other editing programs to kind of fine tune that if you really want to. But overall, the sound quality act out of it's pretty good. So this is the microphone that I'm actually using right now to record this video. It might my house has vaulted ceilings in it. So it does a good job of getting some ambient noise out and getting some good sound quality into the camera. As we all know, internal mics on cameras are horrible. So having that extra mic input is nice. And this one at $60 doesn't break the bank at all. You can even find some Amazon versions that are knockoffs that even use the same color red and everything else. But for this, I used the Rode brand version. It was only $60 and it was a really good addition to the setup and much cheaper than the other versions of the mics that I was using in the past. The second thing that literally changed my life when making YouTube videos at home, the Andy Scene 5.7 inch 1080p monitor that just hooks up with a nice HDMI cable straight into the camera. Now I know what you guys are thinking. A lot of you have flip out screens that you use with your cameras. Me with the Sony a7 III, I don't have that luxury. That said, I have used cameras with flip out screens and what I found is they're really too small if you wanna get some depth in between you and the camera. Even right now, I'm using a wide angle lens so I'm pretty close, but the camera body itself is a little bit farther back. I find with the 5.7 inch screen, you can really fine tune your composition and make sure things are in focus. That is the big deal. The bigger the screen, the easier it is to tell if your shot's in focus. This one came in at $168. You can get really crazy with these screens up in the five, six hundred thousand dollar range with touch screen and a bunch of adjustability and everything else. What I really needed was just a monitor that showed the stats and the picture and whether I was in focus or not. So this came out to be a great compromise. It's also 4K compatible. So when I'm shooting at 4K 24 frames like I am right now, you get a picture on the screen. So it's not like some of the super cheap ones, but it's also not like the more expensive ones. Number three, a fast lens. Right now I am shooting with the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeters. So this is not in that $200 and under range. But in the past, I have shot with what you might call the Nifty 50, fantastic plastic, whatever you want to call it. It's a 50 millimeter, 1.8 aperture lens, and it does one thing very well that brings quality to your videos, and that is it creates depth of field separation between you and your background. Now, depends on what kind of camera you have. The Sony version, this 51.8, you might have to buy used to get underneath that $200 mark as it is like 219, but you can find them used for well under $200 and that'll get you right in that window. Now, Canon and Nikon users have a little bit easier time at this and actually have more options. Ideally, you would want to get a little bit wider than 50 mil for this type of recording format. So on the Canon side, the 24 millimeter 2.8 is actually $129. The 50 millimeter 1.8 is $125. For you Nikon guys, the 50 millimeter 1.8 is $216. You could, again, you can find that used for under 200. 
And the Nikon 35 millimeter one eight is actually $196. So you guys have it really the best out of both worlds. That 35 millimeter is fantastic. So what you're really looking to do here is being able to shoot at that f1.8 aperture so that you can get that depth of field and separation between you, whatever you're shooting, and the background. And of course, the fourth thing is pretty obvious, but it's always worth mentioning. Tripods, tripods, tripods. And you can see around this room, I have several of them set up right now. The one that the camera is on is actually a carbon tripod that I got off of Amazon, one of those Amazon Asia specials. It's not really great for landscape photography, but it's been great for just these on the go, point and shoot, right at me video segment. It also gets down and really compact, so when I wanna travel and do videos on the road, it gets down smaller than some of my more expensive Manfrotto setup. And as you can see, it fits on this table great too for these kind of video shoots. You'll also have other options such as Gorilla Pods and everything else. They're really good for just miscellaneous things, holding lights, everything else. So tripods come out really handy, especially because when you want lighting, you want it kind of up and above from the side coming down at you and not off the camera to create more depth. So for instance, this carbon tripod that I got off of Amazon was $129. You can get the Gobies and some others for like the $116 to $46 range, depending on the flexible ones. If you really want to get crazy, you can go way above that. Tripods can get pretty expensive, but for this type of use in an area that doesn't need a whole lot of support, this one's just sitting on a table and the other one's sitting on hardwoods, you really don't need something super expensive. You just need to make sure the camera doesn't move. So they work out great in that. The fifth thing is lighting. And I actually got this Viltrox LED light off of Amazon for one specific reason. Well, actually two specific reasons, but mainly it's adjustability, but you can adjust both the color and the intensity of the light. So you can go from 3300K, which is pretty warm, all the way up to 5600K, which almost gets on the bluish end, but it lets you fine tune the light to give you a more natural look which way you're going. The best part about this light is only 38 bucks, and it puts out an amazing amount of light, especially in these conditions. I've got the, that light and a little bit of light from a laptop screen that's creating all the light that you're seeing from me right now. Whew, got talking so much. Needs to get a sip. Anyway, all right, so we're to number six, and I know six is kind of a weird countdown, but that's just kind of what this list turned out to this time. But the last one is Sony replica batteries, specifically the MPF550, and they come out to $38 for two batteries and the charger. The reason I say this is all these accessories that I'm using right now, specifically the light and the monitor up above, can be powered in with DC power. However, that's really annoying when you're just trying to set up. The nice thing is that they take the exact same replica batteries for power. It's become kind of the industry standard to use that Sony design for these accessories. So go ahead, spend a little extra money to get it because it'll make it so much easier when you're just going to shoot. You won't have to worry about plugging into multiple outlets. So I'm gonna throw a little bonus out here and there is one thing that you can get for free that's gonna really kind of heighten your videos and that is editing software. I use Adobe Premiere. The main reason I use it is because I'm already a member of the Adobe Creative Suite. I pay for that monthly, mainly for Photoshop and Lightroom. But if I didn't need Photoshop and Lightroom, I could use DaVinci Resolve for free. Their latest version, version 15, is right there on par almost with Premiere with me at this point, at least for my skill range. So if you're looking to get into a more heavy video editor than like iMovie or some kind of CAN software that you were using before, Download DaVinci Resolve. There's a ton of YouTube videos that people have created a community around with a bunch of tips and tutorials to get you started. But to kind of round out all that equipment with some really good software, it's never been easier. I remember back in the day when I was working for a production company back in the late 90s and early 2000s, we used to have major equipment and major expensive software just to do linear editing. Today, all you need is a laptop and DaVinci Resolve, and you're off and running faster than when we were even doing it back there. Can you imagine not even real-time editing? In other words, we had to render before you could play the timeline back. That's what things used to be. Today, it's so much easier, and it's really exciting to watch. So guys, I really enjoyed the beer. It was really good. So check out that M43 uh, Hazy IPA whenever you get a chance, if you find it at your local stores. Other than that, those are my top six things under $200 that really help me out when I'm trying to make these kind of videos. I will link them all in the description below, down there. If you click on those links, it does help out the channel, so I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, hit up the comment section. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Even hit the bell if you want to know when new videos hit. And until then, on to the next one. Thank you guys. Peace.